Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cecilia Campillo. I'm here on behalf of El Pueblo Clinic's TCE program. For those of you have, who ha don't understand what TCE is, I'll try to explain briefly. Uh, TCE stands for trichloroethylene, which is an industrial solvent. That solvent uh, caused uh, some harm in people's health some years ago when uh, it seeped into the ground, through the ground and into the aquifer and caused health problems to people on the south side. Today uh, on our program, I'm very happy to have two uh, gentlemen that are very experienced in the topic of TCE and then who will be talking to us about their experience and also a little bit of history of how they became involved. Uh, today we have Mr. Edward Quintana. He's co-founder of Tucsonans for a Clean Environment here in Tucson. And Mr. Henry Vega, a member of the Health Advisory Board for the TCE program at El Pueblo Clinic. We'd, we'll go to Edward first. Eduardo, it's a pleasure to have you here and thank you for coming. Uh, I know we've been having a bit of a problem connecting and I'm so glad you, uh, you're here today. Uh, one of the questions we had for you uh, was, please explain to us how you became involved with Tucsonans for a Clean Environment. Can you give us a little history on that, please? Thank you for inviting me, Cecilia. And um, let me just uh, say that I have not been active with Tucsonans for a Clean Environment for quite a few years. I was a co-founder and I was active in the early years, but many people have taken up the mantle and have continued the, the battle since. So I just wanted to clarify that. Mm -hmm. How I became involved um, uh, was through a personal contact at work. I worked at Raytheon uh, in the early 80s when I first uh, moved to Tucson. And uh, one of my co-workers was Marie Sosa. Marie Sosa uh, was just a wonderful, vibrant, uh, friendly, uh, you probably know her, yes, I do. lady. And uh, I worked with her at the plant. And uh, I remember I, I didn't see her for a while. And uh, I, I asked about her. And people said, well, she's sick. And, and uh, then she'd come back to work. And, and then she'd be gone again. And people would say, well, she's sick. And I, and I kept thinking, this is this lady's always getting sick or something, and then I found out she'd had uh, a mastectomy and then another mastectomy. And uh, at that time, uh, we were working with a lot of chemical solvents right there where I worked. And sometimes I noticed that people would just open one of the back doors and just throw a bucket of it out into the, into the desert. And uh, it caused me a lot of uh, concern because I knew those chemicals were hazardous. And then little by little, uh, through the newspaper, I heard that there had been uh, a contamination problem in, in, in Tucson where uh, some of those chemicals that we worked with had seeped into the groundwater, into the aquifer, gone out into the community. People had, had poisoned their wells and people were drinking it and that Marie was one of those people. So when Marie came back to work, I asked her about that and she told me about how she was sick and how her, her uh, husband was sick and how her daughter was sick and her other daughter was sick and how her dog had died of cancer and and later on, she told me about how 25 people on that, on that street, uh, Elvira, I think it was, also had cancer. And uh, so I, I was just uh, shocked. I was just uh, amazed that this was going on and there was no, no, uh, no crisis, no, nothing on the evening news, no, no general alarm, no call out the National Guard, nothing. It was just... Uh, Whenever uh, industrial accidents or illnesses were talked about, it'd be someone that was killed in a mine or something like that. And here, there was something like, like, like Bhopal, India. It was killing people. It was injuring people. But it was, it was a silent killer, and, and no one was talking about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was in the early 80s. I uh, started learning a little bit about it and reading a little bit about it. Every so often, there'd be a, an article in the paper. And then in 1985, there were, there were a, a lot of articles in the summer of 85 by reporter Jane Kay. Right. And I would say she's the person that I would credit with being the one that brought it out into the public. And she, it was, there were some very alarming articles. She did a whole study in history of the contamination and the wells. And she got some statistics of the people who lived in the community. And she found that there were 
There were unusual numbers of uh, childhood leukemias and testicular cancers, and that we had a serious problem on our hands. But uh, there, the, the public uh, health people were saying that uh, this was all hysterics, that there was uh, no problem. The uh, politicians were running for cover. I the uh, board the of supervisors were running. The yeah. uh, whatever you couldn't mm -hmm. find a, a public official to come out and stand with the people and say the people are right and something needs to be done. Right. But um, the uh, health department director uh, Pat Nolan had a meeting on the south side one day, and at the meeting she came and told pretty much that if there was contamination, it was just a tiny bit of contamination that couldn't possibly hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. But at that meeting, I and uh, some other people passed around a sign-up sheet, and we said, this, this is wrong. Something needs to be done about this. And uh, Good for you. So we passed around a sign-up sheet, and we called uh, for a public meeting, and there was a public meeting shortly thereafter. And at that public meeting, uh, Melinda Gonzalez, Richard Gonzalez's uh, wife, mm -hmm. and I, and uh, uh, I, I can mention some names. The only problem I have is that I won't give credit to all the people who deserve credit. Right. So if those people are listening, please forgive me because I've worked at Raytheon now for many years and, and uh, parts of my uh, memory are gone. But uh, I, I just wanted to mention Lucy Anderson, who's just another, another housewife, who was very active in the first uh, committee. Saul Blackman and um, uh, Bruce Wheeler and uh, let's see, Lynn Prouty. Uh, there were a few other people, and, and right now, uh, Nick just, Skull, uh, you, you mentioned Nick Skull, mm -hmm. who who was a uh, 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 a landscape person who was uh, hired by Raytheon actually to cover over some of the toxic waste ponds that they had out there, mm -hmm. and uh, he told them, uh, "This is ridiculous." Well, it wasn't Raytheon; it was Hughes. I'm not going to uh, cover these waste ponds. They wanted him to put a little cactus here and there, and he says, "In the first place, the cactus is going to die." In the second place, the aquifer is 100 feet below us. It's going to contaminate the water table. It's going to poison a lot of people. So they broke their contract with him as soon as he started uh, telling them that what they were doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote letters to the congressman, I believe Deacon Sini, uh, others at that time, trying to focus public attention on what was going on. But he, was, he wasn't having any luck either. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until these articles came out in 1985. It wasn't until our, our little committee of very sick people, r uh, Hughes workers, uh, community people, Marie Sosa, other people, until we started getting together and, and uh, continuing to try to keep this in the public eye. Mm -hmm. What did you do? How did you come together? And what were your plans at the beginning of the Tucsonans for a Clean Environment Committee? What was the purpose and what was your goal to do at that time, uh, Edward? We weren't completely sure at the time, but we wanted, uh, uh, it, it was a process. We, 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 we knew we had a deep sense that we wanted justice. Mm -hmm. that, that we felt that there was a crime committed. We felt that the criminals were getting away with impunity. And uh, we, we wanted someone to just recognize that actually at first. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit, little bit at a time, we started identifying the things that we thought would, would be necessary. First of all, we felt that, that, that uh, what was going on needed to be documented, that there needed to be some sort of a survey mm -hmm. that would document. And then we, we felt that it had to have an official stamp. We felt that, uh, that uh, early intervention in, into some of these diseases needed to be made to save later survivors, mm -hmm. because here we are 15 years later, exactly. there are now people sick. If there had been er early intervention you know, 15 years ago, some people's lives could have been saved. Some people could have avoided the disease and the, and the suffering that they've had to go, have gone through, have right. gone through. So those were some of the things that we wanted to do. And uh, that's a very interesting history and uh, very important. And as you know, uh, little uh, as as little as we have been able to contribute through the TCE program, it's still a lot. The TCE program at El Pueblo Clinic that's addressing the health concerns of people that were exposed to TCE and that are uh, still today suffering from those chronic illnesses that uh, were, were brought about because of the contamination. Uh, we have hundreds of people that have passed through our clinic and uh, yet we see a new, a new generation coming uh, to the clinic, the young people, because these illnesses uh, don't manifest until years later and uh, it's years later when, when uh, 
when we're being we're addressing this uh, very key issue that you mentioned before could have been prevented had we been more aware mm -hmm. of, of, of the problem earlier on could have been prevented as early as 1959 when mm -hmm. the chief hydrologist yes. at Hughes mm -hmm. uh, alerted the company that to what they were, their practices were going to lead to some kind of trouble Correct. So. well we're, we're going to come back to you Eduardo because I have several other questions I'd like uh, to ask of you so that you can talk a little more, bit more. And we are talking about TCE, uh, trichloroethylene, the uh, solvent that uh, seeped into the aquifer and went into the wells on the south side of town. And that, that sol those industrial parks that sit on the south side were creating a lot of these pollution problems for the people on, on the south side. And still today, uh, some of the uh, patients that come through the uh, clinic at El Pueblo are bringing to us uh, these uh, illnesses that they claim are as a result of TCE. Right now we're going to turn to <coughs> Mr. Henry Vega. Henry, I'm so happy that you're here. Um, I know that we see each other quite often because we're involved in some of the issues that we're talking about here today. Uh, and you and I uh, attend a lot of the meetings with the Health Advisory Board and, and the Board of Directors uh, meetings at El Pueblo Clinic. Um, welcome and thank you for being here and tell us a little bit about yourself as a community member and how you're involved in TCE. Well, thank you, Cecilia. It's my pleasure to be here today. Thanks for the invitation. And uh, I'm going to make uh, a couple of <coughs> expressions in Spanish, you know. My sole reason now, you know, that we're getting, speaking from myself, you know, we're getting older, is that, uh, you know, we have to be aware, you know, of the, our surroundings, you know. So here, you know, here's a an element that really affects our environment. And um, my biggest concern now is the young generations. And uh, I will uh, repeat it in Spanish, you know. Uh, el interés uh, del lema y el tema que nos encontramos aquí este, es um, del, uh, del ambiente. Y, y el interés mío es uh, ahora más para las generaciones nuevas, los, los, uh, los jóvenes que vienen adelante mis nietos y otros uh, niños que van a venir adelante así como el resto de la comunidad también inclusive y, uh, y toditos estos temas son muy importantes el tema del ambiente es, una, es un tema muy grande y lema eh, el tema el lema que hemos tenido que, que pues uh, hemos sido víctimas de él y, y uh, we uh, have uh, been victims of this you know and uh, I like to go back and give a little history on that from what I've uh, uh, studied, you know, and being a, a long time uh, a native here from Tucson and uh, from, the, from the south and the west side of Tucson, which uh, has, is, a, is, a, is the era that's been affected uh, more so, is that the, the problem started uh, with the Army Air Corps. And, you know, if I can say, uh, you know, all these things that happen, if we, if we can blame it at ignorance, uh, well, it's fine, you know, but it's, uh, we're now in 1999, and uh, people perhaps didn't do it, you know, uh, uh, so purposely, but uh, the bottom line for the name of the, our defense department in our great country, uh, the Army Air Corps started uh, uh, doing the cleaning of airplanes in the late 20s, early 30s, uh, continued on to 40s, and then the, the beginning of Second World War, um, the uh, wh when it became uh, um, our big station here, Davis Mountain. Mm -hmm. So now it's the Air Force, you know, Army became uh, Air Force. Uh, a continuation of also cleaning, uh, using the same solvent to clean uh, airplane parts. And then uh, at the beginning of the uh, Second World War in 41, um, there was uh, some, uh, there was five aircraft companies that were modifying planes at the old uh, Tucson Airport uh, area authority, uh, the big, uh, the old big famous three hangars. And so there was a, a lot of TC dumping done there. There was a lot of gentlemen, there, you know, this, this created a lot, of, a lot of jobs. We understand that, it created a lot of work. And uh, for those people that uh, weren't uh, qualified to, to be in the draft uh, at those times, you know, and go and serve the country, uh, the ones that stayed here, including a lot of women, were hired uh, by these companies that were there at, uh, at the old hangars. And um, there was a lot of gentlemen that now have uh, come out and, and spoke, you know, 
that uh, they, they used to be sent on uh, steak trucks uh, out in the desert with 55 gallon drum cans, you know, to go out and, d and dump a TCE uh, in the desert. And, uh, you know, the ignorance uh, lied for, you know, they did, they never thought, you know, that uh, uh, it, it really hurts me, you know, because Tucson, uh, a lot of us don't know, is one of the world's only city that subsidizes our drinking water solely from, from our ter turbines and pumps, you know, below our, um, our um, stratosphere and our first uh, uh, higher aquifer. So, um, uh, it's been it's been a long process. Uh, Hughes started in '52, also doing a tremendous job in dumping in dumping TCE, hundreds of gallons of TCE, and um, I now see the remediation program that is in place, and millions of dollars you know have come in for the remediation uh, program. You know, first uh, first that came in was Burr Brown uh, voluntarily, private company. Um, uh, second Hughes. Have they done all the cleanup then? And, uh, and no, the no. But uh, the projections are that in 20 years it would be clean. Now you know it's it's a it's a it's a very hard, uh, I think, uh, uh, prognostic that 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 is being done because uh, we can't tell. You know how the remaining of the TCE to the stratosphere is going to keep moving down as uh, rains and and other things do happen. There's uh, there's specific names you know for, for pockets of TCE have formed through the stratosphere. Uh, in, and, and would be reaching the, uh, the uh, upper aquifer. But uh, a, a tremendous program has been set in place, including the TARP program, city program. Then the uh, last one that, uh, that I attended to uh, about a month ago is the, uh, the land site, the, the, la the fill, uh, land, uh, landfill. landfill uh, and uh, previous to that was the, uh, the uh, air guard. And we have the latest technology you know, in, in, in uh, doing the uh, cleaning of the water. But uh, I don't believe that um, that uh, it's, uh, it's it's going to take a long time to, to many, many years. clean. And it um, my involvement when I first got involved in the, in the seven about seven years ago when I lost my sister after hearing all these stories and seeing you know that there was children uh, uh, dying and, and uh, elderly people dying and, uh, and now we have a young 40 40 uh, at the age of 40 years you know I have a lot of nephews and nieces uh, that have come uh, with lupus. Uh, diabetes, um, pigmentation problems, um, early strokes, uh, minor heart attacks, uh, and uh, I have, uh, I've had some uh, nieces that worked at Hughes that came with lupus, and it took a long time for, uh, for the medical uh, profession to, to um, diagnose and, 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 and tell my, some of my nieces what the problem was. And, um, and some of these people are so, um, so uh, devoted to the job, you know, that they've gotten well a little bit and they're going back to work. And, uh, you know, the, some of these young ladies and, and young men uh, have worked at Hughes for almost 30 years. So that means that, you know, it, it was, uh, I understand now that the solvent is, uh, before it wasn't as domesticated as it is now, but um, it certainly has done a lot of damage. And uh, it would be nice, uh, my concern would be nice if, um, more people would get uh, would get aware of uh, what has happened to us in the in Tucson, between <coughs> Tucson in the more in the west side and uh, southwest side, uh, to uh, to join us, uh, join hands, so the government can help us, so we can address the medical uh, aspects of uh, of uh, our problem. As you know, uh, and you are part of the um, group of people that support the program at El Pueblo Clinic, that is the TCE program that's addressing health concerns. Um, and uh, you're, you're absolutely correct in wanting to send the word out to the public that as more awareness um, is needed, um, then we can get people to join forces and continue lobbying for money mm -hmm. to supplant what is already there. Uh, federal money has never uh, been a part of the, of, the, uh, of the funding that we receive at El Pueblo. But certainly that that would be in order if uh, if we had the support of the public to to continue not only receiving state and county funding but federal funding as well. Our government officials uh, be more aware. We have to get them more aware. Mm -hmm. My, um, you know, thank God that uh, the board of supervisors uh, about seven years ago, when we uh, I was uh, also a member with the subcommittee, a lot of um, members were there and. Uh, we were advocating and, and uh, 
bringing the subject up, the issue up, and uh, thank God that the county gave us the first $250,000 to address and start a program there at the clinic to address the, uh, the health issue. Uh, later on, uh, many, many of us continue to, uh, to lobby and advocate for, uh, for the state to give us some monies. And then the state came in, thank God, also again, that they gave us uh, another 250000 And as you know, and, uh, and uh, a lot of the members know, that uh, it's uh, been a struggle. And it continues to be a struggle. And um, uh, we, us older people, you know, have to be conscious and be aware and think about it that, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's think about the new generations that are coming in. Let's also think, you know, that the uh, water that uh, is being distributed through the water systems in, the, uh, in our uh, municipal uh, water system, uh, we're not the only ones that are getting uh, the, uh, the uh, recycled water now. And uh, now we have another uh, problem, you know, with, uh, with a cap. I that's for another, into, that's really I don't want to get another, into that. <laughs> for another program. But, uh, you know, uh, we have to continue, uh, you know, struggling and, and uh, seeking monies uh, to, to, to address, uh, help us address the problem, the medical problem at the, at the clinic. Thank you, Henry. Thank you for that information. It's very important. And uh, stay uh, with the clinic. Stay tuned to the needs. You're a very important person in the community. And uh, through you, this is one of the uh, intents that this program that we have uh, on uh, Tucson or Access Tucson is to send out messages on education and awareness to the community. We're going to come back to Eduardo Quintana. Um, you mentioned R Richard uh, Gonzalez a little while ago, and as uh, you know, Richard was instrumental in um, getting that uh, legal uh, suit uh, on behalf of the Southside people started. It was the first ever attempted uh, lawsuit uh, for <coughs> such a problem as TCE, and he was, uh, he along with other uh, attorneys were, were successful in bringing uh, the lawsuit and closing that case, um, which was settled back in what year was that, Eduardo? Um, about 19, what, 84, 85? When the lawsuit was settled, mm -hmm. I believe while. it was closer to 89. 89. Uh -huh. I believe it was around 91 when people started receiving their checks. Mm -hmm. And um, there were three law firms that were involved. I think it took a lot of uh, courage for uh, Richard Gonzalez and his firm to tackle it. But Richard grew up on the south side. He can tell his story better than I can. Oh, yes. He's a victim, his wife's a victim, his children are victims. So it was something that he needed to do. He was an attorney. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it was, it was a gamble. And I know there's a, there's a lot of bitterness left, the 40% that the attorneys got. Uh, it doesn't somehow doesn't sit right with uh, some people. I can, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when uh, the program came into to being, which uh, hopefully has uh, diffused that feel, the feelings in the community. Our, our intent at the clinic at El Pueblo, where I work, Eduardo, was to um, give people something that they could avail themselves of. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all the money in the world uh, is not going to take care of health needs. Right. So some of that money that was already uh, that was distributed to people mm -hmm. has already gone, but their health mm -hmm. problems continue. Absolutely. So that's the reason that we right. at the clinic are very happy or, and glad and oh. that we can help uh, these folks that claim their health was impacted. Right. Uh, the settlement was for close to eighty-four million dollars, I believe, and then there was an additional thirty-five million that was uh, settled through the. Uh, City of Tucson for a total of something like 120 million, which was a historical amount. But when you divide <coughs> that with the 1,600 and however many members, it was a drop in the bucket in comparison to the to the medical costs, in comparison to to the loss of property. Some people lost their homes, some people lost their marriages, some people lost their lives. Absolutely. And like you say, you can't put a monetary price on a person's life. Absolutely not. And then uh, on on top of that issue is the fact that there were more than 1,700 uh, affected people, more like 40,000. Between and 40 and 60,000 if you count the uh, Raytheon Hughes and workers. And right. so, you know, we could, at the clinic, uh, at El Pueblo Clinic, uh, at 101 West Irvington, uh, we have a, a TCE program for those people that are interested in, in calling us on. 
Our number is 573-0096, and we can give you more information on that. Uh, we can give you a hotline number as well, which is the 746-8828 number. Uh, we're available uh, Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. And I really appreciate uh, the time that you took, Eduardo, from your busy schedule to be here. And we will be inviting um, Richard, uh, as well as some of the other uh, folks that were mentioned uh, earlier, Lucy Anderson and Saul Blackman, we've been trying to communicate with him so that they can bring their stories to us uh, on their uh, concerns um, that were in the past and that even today continue on the south side of town. Uh, Mr. Vega, I want to really thank you for being here today and giving us your insight and your feelings on, on, on TCE. And uh, hopefully that uh, you can come back to us once again because you have some interesting stories that can't be s uh, said in half an hour here today. So again, we thank you for listening, for tuning us in, and we will be with you uh, next week. Thanks again. Thank you.